This video is sponsored by the Apple Watch. For all the people out there that are telling me I can't review an Android device while wearing an Apple Watch, well, this one's for you. Make sure to head over to your local Apple retailer to pick yourself up an Apple Watch. Hey, what's going on, people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, I wanna to talk about my one-year experience with the Galaxy S21 Ultra. This is a fantastic phone, and with the price drop that's probably about to happen, given that the S22 release is right around the corner, some people might wanna pick up this phone instead of the new one. So let's talk about my one-year experience today. Let's talk about the design of the Galaxy S21 Ultra after a year of use. This is a heavy phone. It's a tall phone, it's a wide phone, but out of all the large phones that I own, it's the most comfortable to use, and I've gotten really accustomed to its size and weight. It fits in my pocket nicely, it doesn't weigh me down, and using it with a single hand is the easiest out of all the big phones that I own, including the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Pixel 6 Pro. This is thanks to its ergonomics and of course the one-handed software Samsung has implemented into the OS. From a durability perspective, the phone's held up pretty good. The backside is immaculate. It looks just like it did day one and that's because I kept the case on my phone. It does add some extra weight and bulk, but it's gonna save you a ton of headaches in the future. On the front side, I have some pretty gnarly scratches. So despite this being Gorilla Glass Victus, it's still prone to scratches and it looks pretty bad. So if you wanna keep your screen clean, make sure you pick yourself up a good tempered glass screen protector like one from Whitestone Dome that covers it from edge to edge and it works with the in-display fingerprint scanner. They are on the pricier side, but it's worth it. So when it comes to software, I think Samsung has done an incredible job. Not only do they bring monthly routine security updates, that looks like whale sperm or a coyote kidney, and that is a chicken bone. So not only do they bring security updates every single month, but they also include new features with a lot of these updates. And One UI 4 brought a ton of new features to the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And I gotta say, respect the Samsung because they have done a killer job with software. Speaking of One UI 4, I do wanna talk about some of the notable features that are now available on the S21 Ultra. And the first of which is extra dim, which it allows you to dim your display a little bit lower than normal in case you're like in a movie theater or somewhere really dark and you don't want the brightness on your display blinding everybody around you, including yourself. Next up, we have camera and microphone quick toggles that you can quickly turn on and off depending on the app that you're in. That way it adds to your privacy and your security features on the S21 Ultra. Dynamic theming is great for people that love to customize their phone and they want things to match. You can also now customize the share menu so that way you can prioritize the apps that you use most frequently. The S21 Ultra now has eSIM support if you're in the US and you're on T-Mobile, Verizon, or if you have an unlocked model, which is cool. And there's also a bunch of camera features and enhancements that I recently covered in a separate video, so make sure to check out that video. So even though Samsung has been killing it with their software updates, there are still a few problems. So despite Samsung releasing a ton of new features with One UI 4, the experience itself has been a mixed bag. Personally, for me, it's been perfect. I really enjoyed the experience, but there are several people that have noticed weird animation bugs, as well as software lag and other hiccups. Samsung has noted these issues, and supposedly a fix is coming, so hopefully One UI 4.1 squashes everything and the experience gets even better. Let's talk about performance. I think there's still a misconception when it comes to Samsung smartphones. A lot of people still believe that Samsung phones tend to lag and perform worse over time. I haven't had this issue in years, and the S21 Ultra is no exception. This phone performs extremely well, whether you're gaming, whether you're doing day-to-day -day tasks, or if you're doing multitasking things. Samsung has brought a lot of new software features with One UI 4, such as the ability to use virtual RAM, so in a clutch if you're multitasking and you need some extra RAM, it can use four gigabytes of your internal storage as like a RAM replacement, which is really cool. Not to mention that Samsung has completely revamped the device care menu, giving you a lot of extra features inside of there. Speaking of that, one of my favorite things to do on this phone is game, and that's because of three different reasons. Of course, the specs give you the performance that you need to make it a smooth, fluid experience, but also the software. There are a ton of game settings on this phone to help you fine tune, optimize, and dial in the settings that you need to make your experience a little bit more personal. Also, the display is top notch. I love this display. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, on a mobile phone. It's a 6.8 inch, 120 hertz LTPO panel, and it's smooth as butter. I absolutely love gaming and watching content on this phone. It's just a beautiful experience. And thanks to the LTPO technology, you're gonna save some battery life using this display over something that's forced into 120 hertz all of the time. And speaking of battery life, 
Let's talk about that. When it comes to the Galaxy S21 Ultra, I'm getting around 11 hours screen on time when the screen is set to 60 hertz only. Now, if I use the variable refresh rate or push it all the way up to 120 hertz, I'm getting anywhere between nine and a half to 10 hours, which is great. But this is also when I'm mostly on Wi-Fi. When I step out and I'm using mostly cellular, I'm getting anywhere between six to seven hours of screen on time with the variable refresh rate enabled. I think that's pretty good. When compared to when I first got this phone, throughout the year, battery life has been up and down. I mean, some updates made it worse, some updates made it better. I would say with One UI 4, it has gotten better, or at least now it's back to what it was when I first picked up this phone. So that's definitely a good thing. Charging speeds are not the fastest, but I think Samsung does a good job at giving you a balance of speed while also giving you longevity for battery health. If I take a look at my battery health, it's still 100%, which is great for the first year. There's no depletion or anything like that. So definitely thumbs up for battery life and for charging. I think that uh, Samsung is doing a pretty good job in this aspect. There's also a lot of power saving features built into the software. So you can really customize that experience to really extend your battery life overall. I don't think anybody has anything to worry about when it comes to battery on the S21 Ultra. Okay, so let's close out this video with the camera performance of the S21 Ultra. I would say the performance is just as good. No, no, no. In fact, I would say the performance is better now than what it was day one. They've improved everything from the processing to adding new features to the low light capabilities. Everything has gotten so much better. I love the daytime shots. There's plenty of colors, plenty of richness, contrast. The HDR works great without making things look too fake like some other cameras do. At night, it could be improved a little bit. It's not the best out there. I mean, either the noise reduction is too aggressive, making things look a little bit mushy, or it just doesn't apply enough. But in any case, I don't think most people will be complaining about the shots. There is the slow shutter problem that a lot of people seem to experience, but that can be resolved by doing burst shots or by using manual mode. There's a lot of features when it comes to the camera, including pro mode, pro video mode, and those have gotten better with new interfaces thanks to One UI 4. You also have Expert RAW, which is a separate app that you can download that unlocks 16-bit RAW and gives you manual control over all cameras, including the telephotos, which is awesome. Check out the card up top if you wanna learn more about that. The video recording capabilities are phenomenal. You have 8K video, which Samsung has fine-tuned a little bit with the most recent update giving you better processing. Overall, the S21 Ultra camera experience has been phenomenal. I reach for two phones when it comes to cameras, and that's my iPhone and then this Galaxy S21 Ultra, so I can't wait to see what the S22 brings. Some of my favorite new features that have been brought over thanks to One UI 4 to the camera are the object eraser. It's great for removing unwanted objects out of your photos, and also the ability to start recording a video straight from photo mode by swiping down on the shutter. If you wanna learn more about One UI 4 camera features and tips and tricks, make sure to check out the card up above, but overall, the experience of the S21 Ultra's camera is just, it's phenomenal. I don't think anybody, anybody will be disappointed regardless of what's coming out in the future. So let me know in the comment section, do you plan on picking up the S21 Ultra or the S22? Or if you've been using the S21 Ultra, what has your experience been like? I love hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. I got a car to go wash, so um, enjoy this beautiful, car wash footage. You can buy it. Stock footage. It's nice. Brum brum. Scrub a dub. Dub. <laughs>